trying to move it along and educating like the coach education that has to go in. And one of the biggest parts about the physicality of the girls game that I see has nothing to do with hitting or body contact it has everything to do with body position and leverage and getting quote unquote on the inside. And what does that actually mean? How do you get on the inside? There's a process to that and learning that process. And there's certain skating skills you need. There's certain balance and, uh, you know, puck control skills, but understanding like cutting off someone's hands and, you know, up until maybe a couple of years ago, you know, all this, all the checking was stick to puck. And I said to Ella, stick to puck is a great idea. And it's a wonderful skill. That's just not going to be enough. That's just not going to be. You have to get inside. If you want to check somebody, you have to have stick to puck to control where the puck, to make the puck die on that girl's stick. And then you have to go through the hands to get the puck. That's physicality. And in the girls game, it doesn't have, it's either full on contact or it's a lot of stick to puck and there's not really a lot of control, even like stopping your check. So defensively, we just talked about a defensive corner. Okay. Offense is about movement. Defense is stopping movement. So as you want to be a good defender, you have to find a way within the rules to stop somebody's forward movement. So you, you know, the forward has the puck, they're climbing the wall, you get stick to puck, you get close to them, you force them into a turn. Now you got to push them in so they get pushed into the board so they can't turn anymore. You want to lift their center of gravity and then use a wedge and get underneath them and use a body to position to, to seal and wedge and, and pry the puck and, and separate them from the puck. But it also relates to your escape route. So not only is it about stealing the puck or getting control of the puck or forcing a loose puck, but if we also have to talk about an exit. So now when you get the puck, you have your check is now on your back, which gives you now a natural exit to that other side. That's what I'm talking about, about physicality and a competitive advantage. That's where I see it the most. And then it's testing these things, like how to use your hands. Can you use the top hand of your hand? How do you use that to push someone in to the boards to, to get them to stand upright, to get them to, to lose their leverage? How do you use your uh, upper hand to take their top hand elbow to pin it against their, their, their leg? Like this kind of stuff is really important. We don't talk about that. We talk about stick to puck. But we don't talk about, I'm stick to puck, but then when I get close to you, I want to get my hands on you. And I'm going to have two hands on my stick, and now I'm going to use my top hand on your elbow, and I'm going to come down with my bottom hand on top of your hands. And now I'm going to push you in towards the wall so that now you can't escape. Then I can use my feet and my hips to be able to get control of the puck. That stuff is what I'm really focused on with Ella, trying to get her to become... Yeah. Elite act. I love, uh, lo I love the passion, Daryl. Um, and I think you're bang on, bang on 100%. And I, and I also really like the concept of the exit strategy because what I've seen with the female athletes is that they're uh, so kind of uh, overwhelmed with the body contact is they make contact and then they stop because they want some sort of uh, reinforcement or uh, acknowledgement that wow you made contact and then they forget that you got to get the puck you got to get out of there etc so that's really instructive and I, I think it's an important piece again it, it comes down to that uh, movement confidence and, and literacy uh, on the part of the coach to give that to the athlete and, and on, on the athlete for them to uh, um, uh, learn that I, I guess essentially so that uh, they can continue to execute and then and then play with that intensity and insert assertiveness. But but you guys like Danielle, if you watch the NHL right now, they play more like the women's game than they play like twenty years ago. 
like it the game is too fast if you just go for the big hit you don't really accomplish anything you you have to have a plan like they all talk about cut you know it's better to to rub somebody on the board cut their hands take the puck make a pass and you're out already you know we have great defensemen in NHL that were physical but now they struggle with the game because they go for the big hit and after that they get beat to the inside not you know like I would say Weber like I, I watch Montreal like at, all the time he's struggling right now because the game is is faster and faster and if he missed that hit probably he has no like he has no second plan in women's hockey you have to be uh, I'm not going to say smarter because the guys are getting to to being smarter now because the game is so fast. Because we were not able to hit in women's hockey, we had to have a better plan, like, you know, rubbing them on the ball, like cutting their lane, cutting their hands. What after? Now I think the games, you know, the real, you, you can see, like, when I watch Maple Leaf, like, the, the real effect on that because, you know, I had some, you know, uh, practice with him and the way he teach, you, you can see it. But some players have no clue how to adapt to the speed of the game, and the, the, the game's going to pass them pretty fast. One of the good points that you make there, uh, Danielle, is so much in the, in the NHL is made of the shape of your units. So the entire unit makes a shape. And so if exactly. one person is overextending themselves for a contact – they're disrupting or reducing this shape. And that yes. shape is so important to maintain. And I yeah. think on the women's side, what we do is we see a little more uh, discipline to that shape more consistently. But then the execution of forcing someone to stop and then using that shape in a competitive way, that's where I think we can be better on the women's side. The shape, I right. think, is there more. The discipline is probably too much. And then it's now trying to find a way, how can we leverage this shape to then generate more opportunity in transition? So we get them stopped in the D zone. How do we get out? Do we continue to come up the strong side or can we use the shape to then create speed on the exit to be able to set up our next opportunity? And I think that that's, those kind of disconnects are there. And I, I think, Daniel, you brought it up uh, really well in terms of, like, the discipline where the NHL is at as it relates to contact and how the shape has become more important than the contact. The puck still has to be there. If the puck's not there and it's gone, that contact is now you're disrupting that shape, and that's going to have consequences for us later on. Daryl, would you explain that for me, please? Shape, I... I don't quite understand your concept. Okay, so like if you're if you picture the defensive zone, you have a defenseman at the puck in the corner. You have uh, uh, the center or the first, the F one is is providing support there. You have your D in front of the net, and you have your two wingers positioned wherever you like them. Everyone has them in different spots. Maybe it's on the D on the strong side dot and it's on the inside hash mark. That creates like a shape, like a five on a dice. Okay. Five, five okay. on a dice. Okay. Now, all of a sudden, you stop the puck, and now the puck squirts loose to the, to the forward, okay? And now the forward gets it. Well, now you're in transition. Well, you're trying to maintain that shape and keep everyone in the screen as you get in the neutral zone. So when yeah. we get in the neutral zone, you want everybody to be still in the screen as the as the camera pans. Yeah, yeah. And watch. support. Yeah, support. Now we get in yeah. the offensive zone. Yeah. So what happens in the offensive yeah. zone? Well, you have the two yeah. guys at the point. You got the third man high. Yeah. And you have yeah. someone at the net, someone at the bottom. That's a shape. Yeah. And so okay. that, that shape is important to, to okay. uh, maintain. So yeah. if all of a sudden someone goes rogue and yeah. takes off to finish a contact, they're going to be late maintaining that shape on yep. the way back, which yep. creates a competitive disadvantage. That's what I'm saying. Daryl, I just wanted to mention for the sake of, um, well, everybody here, particularly the uh, females, uh, we created a curriculum in 2000 uh, after the Olympics describing that, get the picture, get the shape, and play the game. So in the D zone, 
we uh, avoided using the word dice. We said man on box behind was the shape to teaching beginning point. And then eventually we didn't talk about D and center. We talked about the first player, but of course we mean D center low first guy back or woman back is going to be the low forward ideally. But in today's game, it's one, two, three, four, five hockey. But back in that day, man on box behind, we did walkthroughs of the shape when they were at the hash mark in the corners. And then we went to man on with the first person, stick on with the second, halfway with the third. And that was sort of the progression of teaching shape and thinking within the shape. Decision making as a group of four with with the shape. So I, I'm I'm glad you know you you've done that. I it's the same thing. We're talking about the same thing. It's just different terminology, and I want to be sure of your terminology because it's going to be the terminology of the future for sure. Thanks. Well, one of the more critical parts of that is the use of the third player who's become now most important, I think. We used to talk about the person at the puck and the second person and the layer that layer of support. But now your third player, I think, is of utmost, criti of utmost critical. Uh, they have the most potential to impact the game. So, for example, if you're in the D zone and you have a center or a F1 and your D are both below the icing line and you create transition, your D, your net front D is now the center. They have to join that rush. They are the third person that's yeah. closest to that to that element. They are really important in that play to understand what their role is because they can't be like, well, listen, I'm the D. Well, the center is already 10 feet away from being 10 feet away uh, from being up the ice. They're not going to be in, in a position to be able to join the rush you're in the best position. So if you don't go, we lose a competitive opportunity to have at least maintain uh, even numbers through the neutral zone and potentially get odd numbers in the neutral zone. Yeah. Uh, and so that, that third player, as it relates to the shape, depending on where the puck is and understanding what your role is, is a huge part of, of, the, of tactics now, I think, that uh, has really emerged. 